and Maze Runner. Hey, we're back. We're back. I'm gonna open a couple windows. Uh, it's that weird time of year where it's like it's. Yeah, we brought jackets because like it's like two days ago it was like 40 degrees out. Yeah, it's not like warm enough for me to not have this on, but yet it's like... If I was just sitting here in a t-shirt, I'd be like, like, fuck, I wish I brought a jacket. Yeah, it, like we still have to have like windows cracked because it was getting a tiny bit sweaty in here. <laughs> it's a little steamy if you can tell by the mood lighting oh, back yeah. here. Oh yeah, we're reviewing this in a deep fog. Or we're just getting pulled over, I don't know. <laughs> oh, wait, we're <laughs> <laughs> we got the blue and red going here. The manager at Parkway pulled up to us uh, yesterday after we when we were reviewing uh, Boyhood, and I guess the the theater was closing. So the manager pulled up in his motorcycle. All of a sudden, next to the car, here, vroom, vroom. you all right in there, huh? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh. We should stop talking about. Uh, um, we should stop talking about uh, Walk Among the Tombstones. Oh, no. I set an alarm this is on here. So alarm. I set an alarm on here to if we went, went like too long, so we could get both videos in. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get another memory card. Um, yeah, if we went like a full sixty-eight minutes, like we did with no. How in the hell did we talk for sixty-eight minutes about no good deed? Like people were leaving. It was just such a random movie. Yeah, we really were going through it like point by point, and people in the comments were like, 68 minutes, oh man, I guess it was terrible. I mean, it wasn't good, but... <laughs> it's. I find it hilarious, that's our longest video. No good deed, the mediocre Idris Elba movie we saw <laughs> is the one we talked the most about. Yay! <laughs> Random. <laughs> I was breaking all kinds of records. <laughs> well, too bad we've our we've eaten up a lot of space on here. Right? And too bad I didn't bring another memory card. We could go sixty eight minutes on Maze Runner. <laughs> this is the Probably. this Probably. This is a movie that normally <laughs> in any other week Sarah and Dave would be here talking about this movie. <laughs> but it's based on a book that they've maybe read. She didn't because uh, I mean she was going to this week, but they gave they gave it uh, only one showing, and it was the 10 p.m. screening. <laughs> Normally, <clears throat> for most things, really, there's also an earlier screen, especially for a young adult movie like this. There's yeah. usually an earlier than 10 p.m. screening, and me and him's can be out can can go on like. Uh, you know, like four or five hours sleep, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically one o'clock right now. I've got to be back on the clock at seven. Sarah and Dave, not so much. So, um... No, they, they, they need the beauty sleep. Yeah, so they didn't want to... They didn't want to do that, so... I texted him the other day, like, you want to do a double feature and <laughs> go see uh, Liam Neeson and The Maze Runner? <laughs> I got to admit... This movie is dumb, but um, <laughs> watching this movie directly after Walk Among the Tombstones... <laughs> it's a bit of a switch. Is It's a little bit of a switch. It's maybe not entirely fair to the movie, but it is dumb. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Like, there, there's no tense scenes. There's no, like, build-ups that this movie could do that will make any impact. After just watching a movie about Liam Neeson hunting people who chop up women for fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, in both movies, kids get killed. <laughs> True. <laughs> Shot. <laughs> this movie did kill a lot more kids than I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> That's the blurb on the poster, but killed a lot more kids than I thought it would. <laughs> Why didn't they climb to the top? I was thinking that throughout this whole fucking movie. Why the fuck didn't they climb to the top of this thing? Yeah, like, the, he, the new kid, stupid new kid, ran that idea past him and like, it's like, no, the vines don't go all the way up to the top. Like, there's like, really thick like ivy that you could climb on uh, not buying it no you like, like you couldn't climb it doesn't go all the way to the top i'm like 
You guys have like built houses and yeah. scaffolds and all kinds of shit. Build a fucking ladder. Yeah. Yeah. Build a giant fucking ladder. And then when they're in the maze, there is vines that go up to the top of that yeah. goddamn And then they're just that one scene, he's just running around on fucking top of them. Like, see yeah. how much easier that is when you don't have to go between all this shit? Yeah. See how easy it is when you climb to the top of the goddamn thing? Climb to the fucking top of it. Like, I don't know if the book explains it better than this, but that was... It was really aggravating throughout this whole goddamn movie because these characters are really stupid. Not only do they not think to climb to the top of this goddamn thing, but two other things too. One, <clears throat> if you built not one ladder, but two, or maybe a really long vine, it probably wouldn't matter if someone got stuck on the other side of it. You could alley-oop over the goddamn thing because yeah. there's not a dome over it. Like, there's nothing oh man, the door it. closed. Somebody climb up there and kick the vine over. Yeah, kick the fucking vine <laughs> over. We built a ladder. You built like a treehouse that's the size of the goddamn thing. There's yeah, wood. There's a forest. Yeah, they, and, and I mean, it's not just like they didn't build like a fucking lean to. No, it's it's fucking like Swiss Family Robinson up in that bitch. Yeah, and also they have weapons. They have machetes. They have a lot of spears that they mainly just use on each other. And <laughs> if you had sent, if you had sent maybe more than two people into this goddamn maze, if you sent like twenty, thirty of these people in this maze with giant fuck off spears and machetes. You could probably take on some of these things. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> what the fuck ever those things even were. They're like mechanical um, scorpions, basically. Yeah, but with like also had like fleshy bits. Yeah. <clears throat> the movie is it's Lord of the Flies crossed with Cube. That's it. Yeah. yeah, it's Lord of the Flies crossed with, crossed with Cube. And I can't, even though this movie makes no goddamn sense, none, and it was driving me nuts throughout the movie how much this, how little sense this fucking movie was <laughs> making in terms of how the characters were acting, in terms of like, we gotta have an asshole guy in here, cuz. And it's the kid from, it's the nerdy kid from We're the Millers. Like, yeah, I buy him as a tough guy. Well, and seriously, his face is so fucking weird. Like, he looks like post-plastic surgery carrot top. He could play a serial killer. <laughs> he probably is one. <laughs> play nothing. He is one. When it got to a point where he was, like, quote-unquote, taking things over and is, like, threatening people and stuff like that. He's got the conch now. <laughs> yeah, like, really, dude, no fucking way. Like, you are so gonna get overpowered, and he does within No, like he's, a like, minute. the strongest guy in the camp. Yeah. <laughs> like, nobody fucks with him. It does really annoying, like... Even if you didn't know this was based on a book, you can tell about ten minutes in, because it re does really annoying... Very exposition heavy dialogue throughout 90% of this movie. Not only does it do really annoying exposition dialogue throughout of it, throughout it, but everything has like cute names that they've made up for things that already exist. Like, yeah. Like, what do you call that? <clears throat> we call it we we call it the changing. Really, because I call it getting stung. Yeah, he's got an infection. Yeah, he's got an infection. We call <laughs> we call it itchy bumps. It's a mosquito bite. Stop doing that. <laughs> we call those hard marshmallows rocks. <laughs> they do that throughout this move, throughout this whole movie. Well, and like, I'm, yeah, because like towards the beginning, like he the the uh, that that black kid. Uh, I can't remember his name. Every most of the characters were interchangeable in this thing. They had the names that you'd expect. Like they all have like sort of vaguely like sci-fi fantasy style names. Except for like the fat kid, his name was just Chuck. Yeah, which I kept hearing as Chunk most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, like the 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 black kid who was in charge, like he kept like towards the beginning, like like referring to the people that live there as gladers the gl we call them the gladers who who calls who calls them that you you call yourselves th those okay but they they established that before he ever mentions that that little area they refer to as the glade i'm like oh 
So I guess the okay, it's the glade. You're you live here, so you're gladers. <clears throat> I would have went with gladiators. <laughs> 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 We call that the earth hair. Grass? Yeah, it's, it's like shit like that. <laughs> it's like they make up fucking things like, it's like, what's that terrible noise we hear at night? Those are grievers. We call no. them the grievers. It's always that. It isn't just like, those are grievers. It's not that. It is always, we call them the, and whatever the name is. Every 15, 20 minutes this happens in the movie, which screams... I don't want to paint with a broad brush, but screams based on a young adult novel. Yeah. I know, I know, like, but that is a stereotype of this kind of book. It's <laughs> of like, this particular kind of genre. Yeah, it's like, oh man, what do those guys do? Oh, they're, they're, they're the cooks here. Like, okay, what about those guys over there? Oh, they're builders. What about the cool kids over there at their own private table? Those are runners. <laughs> the runners. It's like, what do they do? They fucking run. That's they call, we call them the runners. Should you call them the maze runners? Shh. <laughs> 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 I don't want to drop that title anywhere. <laughs> My break. It's... It, I, I'm, I don't want to go so far as to say that it's a bad film, necessarily, because even with all that shit that was annoying me and distracting me about it, I wasn't often bored during it, because I tend to kind of like certain movies like this, whether it's a maze movie like this, or Cube, or Cube yeah. Zero, <clears throat> or like, you know, the second half of Hellraiser 2. Well, what about Cube 2? Hypercube. Fuck that. <laughs> 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 Fucking Hypercube. What? <laughs> it's my uh, p parallel universe self. He's been down here 40 years longer than me. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, oh. And his eye's missing. So I what tend to... <laughs> I tend to... I, I kind of like movies like that. This isn't a very good example of that, though, because it's... The characters aren't that... They're pretty interchangeable with each other. No one really has any conversation in this that isn't exposition-heavy. 90% of the characters in this movie are completely interchangeable with each other. 90% of these... 90% of the people in this movie are just nameless... Background filler. There's a lot of Nikki and Paolo's in this movie. Oh, more than that. 35-year-old like, guy in the background. Yeah, like, there's, <laughs> they're all supposed to be these kids, but then, like, every now and then in, like, a scene, like, you'll notice somebody in the background who looks like he's my age or older. And you're like, <laughs> like, I don't think he's a teenager. <laughs> Like, y'all been here three years? How long he been here? Fifteen? There was a guy in the background who looked like Jason London at one point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he couldn't pull off Teenager when he was a teenager. <laughs> he always looked like he was 25. And watch it. I mean, I... But, but yeah, like, I, most of the people in this movie are there to, yeah, either just, oh, this is this, and let me tell you about it for ten minutes here. Yeah. Or they're any person on Lost who wasn't, like... <laughs> who wasn't doing jack shit. Yeah. Who was doing laundry in the background. It's like those people you always see just walking back and forth with, like, piles of sticks. It's like... <laughs> where do they do all day? Where are they taking those every single day? We call them the gatherers. <laughs> <laughs> What's their job at the camp? <laughs> Let me tell you, for five minutes. And But I watch... Because I've seen so many movies like this, I was sitting there like, well, I, I have a feeling to a point how it's going to end. There's going to be a scientist who comes out. Very good. Yeah, or like they power it down like, oh man, turns out you, there was no maze the whole time. They were just like laying in beds hooked up to like a computer. Fuck, yeah. Turns out it's Inception. <laughs> this is not the sequel I asked for. <laughs> and, and so, yes, there are scientists who pop up at the end of this because it kind of seems like this is going on, like you said in the movie, parallel to the events of Resident Evil. 
Yeah, yeah, fuck, they show up at the end, like, they find the fucking facility, and yeah, it's like, it's like, oh shit, a much different movie took place on this side of the wall. Yeah, on the other side of the wall, the climax of Cabin in the Woods happened, sort of. <laughs> like, it's, there's scientists there, and they, they explain, the, to a point, they explain everything, They the movie thinks it explains everything. It turns out that this is a post-apocalyptic universe, in which... <laughs> The sun has scorched the earth, which has caused uh, massive sun damage on people and has burnt them to death. Cities are destroyed. There's basically sand dunes covering everything. And disease has, like, rage viruses and shit have taken over people. So It's, it's essentially Resident Evil apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so... <coughs> maze? So yeah, they this what? this group uh, WCKD the world, oh my god the world catastrophic kill, kill zone. zone directorate or some it was bullshit. world world catastrophic kill zone department and they keep calling it wicked throughout the movie wicked is good wicked is good so you at least they're aware they're the villains. How much do you want to bet that's one of those organizations where they came up with an acronym and then figured out what the fuck That's the exactly is. what it is. It's like, <laughs> like, not one guy was sitting there like, you know, if you just take the letters, it says wicked. Yeah, it's like an... It's under like, no shit. Like an, <laughs> like an undercover brother where it was called Brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah, so... Why... The world is completely destroyed, but we've got enough technology to make to have like future computers. Um, well, apparently, using their massive abilities too, they were able to build a small, self-sustaining ecosystem. Like they yeah. basically built the biodome. Yeah. Like, which why aren't there's no top on this thing? So why aren't they getting absolutely fried by the sun every day? Mm. And yeah, apparently like, that weird virus that takes people over, they're immune to, but it seems like if those things in the maze sting them, they get the virus. We call it the flashback. <sighs> so it, it didn't make sense. A virus that only seems to give them flashbacks to give us more exposition to explain to the audience that the main character is maybe at least at one point was in on this whole experiment that is going on oh and it makes you like crazy like like roid rage crazy yeah yeah it does the roid rage thing they kind of look like when you sort of start turning into a zombie on yeah like a dead. little pale like you like yeah. veins and shit coming out mm -hmm. but yeah it's like so there are all these kids are immune to the virus <clears throat> and to test out how that affects them they built a fake version of the woods and dumped them in it to cure the virus maze and if they stay in the maze, there's like, again, giant weird cyborg spiders. Which I guess that murder them. It's what like, do they even do? Do they just the kill them? Of, what's the point of that? I don't know why he would build that. <laughs> because, dude, the sun has scorched the earth. So obviously, these he, these twenty five kids are the only solution we have to curing this so incurable obviously disease. Obviously, we need to put them in a maze and send monsters after them. Of course, clearly, maybe the book explains it way better than this movie does. I I don't uh, know. I'm sorry, they, I I, fa I fail to understand how the world is like this gone to shit. Like it's showing it afterwards, and yeah, it looks like the end of fucking like. 2012 or like the day after tomorrow but you built this fucking facility you built this maze that restructures itself on a daily basis you genetically and robotically engineered these fucking spider scorpion monster mm -hmm. things which do they eat them what do they i i don't know what they do but apparently they just roam around and if you're in the maze they will they fucking murder you and just drag your body somewhere. Yeah. It's like, I don't understand how that's helping further science. <laughs> it's sort of like, you remember the, the uh, underpants gnomes chalkboard from South Park? Collect underpants. 
question mark equals profit. It's yeah. disease and diseased and post apocalyptic question mark maze. <laughs> It'd be like, it'd be like if scientists now were like, it's like, oh, I'm going to see if after tinkering with this mouse, if it still remembers how to get through this little simple maze to get to the cheese. And if it takes more than a minute, you like throw it in a garbage disposal. <laughs> it's like, why would you do that? The mouse is, the mouse has navigated the maze and found the cheese. So AIDS is cured. <laughs> what? <laughs> So, well, it'll explain it in the sequel that they obviously set up at the end of this movie by saying, now we start phase two. I know like, they're going to put him in another maze. Yeah, that's my thing. It's like, oh, man, they rescued him. They're going to take him to a different maze and drop him off. Yeah. Global maze made out of the structures from all of, like, that's kind of what I was expecting the last shot to be. Like, all of the abandoned, like, buildings in the city that they've now formed to be a bigger citywide maze. Yeah. Well, sh shit, in a point, I, I honestly, like, I think there was a reference to Cube in this movie. Was there? Like, well, at one point, like, when it's actually showing, like, a flashback of, like, the main characters, like, working in that facility. Mm -hmm. Like, on one of the screens, it shows, like, a big the big, you know, cube made out of smaller cubes and like they keep like the cubes keep like coming off and like sliding around and like rearranging into different spots. I missed spots. that. So I was looking at like so what? cube exists in this universe <laughs> or at least as a concept like a movie they're like like they watch it like you know what? Yeah. I can Fuck. do that. Shit turns out doing a big square that does that's really hard. Um Maze. Maze. Maze works better. Like, we're really gonna solve the apocalypse with a cube? No, man. Maze. That's where it's at. <laughs> that means that there is a really dark and brutal movie going on underground in this universe. <laughs> it's, just, it's such weird... stuff, because, like... It's like, why do they come up on an elevator? into the middle of the thing because when they were escaping the thing they just went in like a straight line they never went up or down you mean through the maze well like uh yeah the the, the, the maze itself is flat but then whenever they got to like that actual exit door mm -hmm. it led out to like look like the tunnel that leads in between like a stadium and the parking oh deck next door. oh okay <laughs> that actually was like the one joke in the movie i kind of liked but yeah eventually they they get to like the end of this corridor and there's just a door like above it it's just like a normal like exit sign it's like <laughs> the kid is one of the nameless kids in this movie standing there and just goes, Really? That was like Thank the you. one joke that I that got a laugh that got a laugh out of me. That was honestly a pretty good joke. <laughs> but like they all of that was in a straight line and then even like from that like control room that that emptied into, the door opened and they just went out and they were still on solid ground. Mm-hmm. So then why, when they're they're going into that place, are they going up a freight elevator that seems to go up for, like, 50 fucking stories? <laughs> Just for show. Showmanship. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's all I can come up with. Like I didn't even think about that. I don't know. I, I, I There's don't so much it. in this, like, that doesn't make sense. I don't know why the, the scientists sure... had to fake their own deaths. Yeah. I, again... I maybe the book explains way more than this movie does. I'm sure it does. I'm well, cause like yeah, there was there was just this movie is full of just half answered questions. It's like at a point they tell him like towards the beginning of the movie, like before he becomes the runner, uh, when he's the guy who gets fertilizer. I tell him, like, oh, yeah, go into the woods and get some more fertilizer. And then he goes into the woods, which suddenly get a lot deeper and more dense. Like, mm -hmm. he was in the middle of the fucking forest. He wasn't, like, like I'm sorry, like, that little area, like, you could maybe walk through, like, a hundred yards of forest and you'd be at the wall. Oh, yeah, it was suddenly, was, it suddenly it looked like Friday the 13th. Yeah, like, he was in the deep fucking woods. Yeah. But, uh, he's walking by and eventually comes across, like, this, I, like, grave marker that somebody built that 
it's made out of sticks. Looked like the fucking Iron Throne mm-hmm. from fucking Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. made out of sticks. And like, there was a little nameplate on it that said like George. Yeah. But then there was just like piles of like bones around it, like human-looking bones around. It. Like, the fuck did he just go back to? And mm-hmm. then they like another guy just out of nowhere just attacks him, and then they run out back into the the field where everything else is and they never mention that again like what the fuck was all that Mm -hmm. yeah yeah the little like skull fucking tombstone thing that was going on in there i don't i don't know i there there was like a fucking about that like a half dozen rib cages out there like what the fuck have they been doing back here Obviously, they killed Leatherface. <laughs> Clearly, you put Leatherface in the maze, send him after him. Well, that's like a thing, too. Is like at one point, like in the background, you could see somebody, like it looked like they were stretching and tanning like an animal hide. Oh, but oh, be, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'd be damned if I saw a fucking single animal in this movie. I. Like, it looked like it looked like they were stretching out like a fucking like bobcat skin or something like that. Yeah, I noticed that once, um, at, the, at the beginning of it when he first shows up in the in the elevator. Yeah, I was like, where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> or there are only like maybe like twenty wild animals there, and they've already killed them. They've already eaten all of them. <laughs> Just uh, yeah. Well, did they say something about? Did they have? Did they have a line in there where they said that sometimes supplies get sent up to them? Yeah, but it seemed like the supplies that were coming up were like. A crate of mason jars and like a like a fifty five gallon barrel of water or something like that. Yeah, I mean, and I I take it like knives too. And um, yeah, probably a box full of fucking machetes. Machetes, because everybody knives, had one. weapons, stuff like that. Like they and people got put in here individually, like one by one, every single month. And they, they're talking to the guy who's kind of the leader, and he was the very first one there, who is seriously lucky to be alive, because who wouldn't, in that situ, who would instinctively know not to go down that hallway? Yeah. Like, if you get, if you get put in a giant area like that, and there's a hallway that looks like it's an exit, how do you know not to go down it? How do you know what it is? How do you... With and and survive. Well, and it seems like too, like that elevator comes up in the middle of the day. Yeah. So when he came up there, it would have already been open. So he would have had no idea that it closes at sundown. Yeah. Unless that was in a little note that was given to him. Like. They... <laughs> by the way, d- door opens and closes at this time and this time. Yeah. There's also monsters and scorpions, because science. This movie's just dumb. Like, it wasn't good enough. There wasn't enough character. It wasn't intense enough for me to look past all of that. It wasn't. Because I can look past really dumb shit in movies. I totally can. If there's something about it that I that I give a shit about. And I, did, I wasn't sitting there miserable through this movie. I wasn't sitting there entirely bored during it. But there was nothing... There was nothing about it to carry the shit about it that is just not explained in this yeah. film. And even the shit that it tries explaining, like why they can't climb to the top, is, I'm sorry, I'm not buying it. I don't buy that for reasons we mentioned earlier. Yeah. A simple putting a roof on the thing would take care of that little hole that they have in this film. <laughs> Maybe I'm being too nitpicky about it because we saw a really fucking good movie before this, but I don't think I am. But yeah, because it's that sort of thing where it's like, it's like, no, I mean, that's a glaring hole in this logic for me. And there's just more than, there's a lot. There's a lot. Every five minutes you're reminded about something that doesn't make sense. If it was one or two fine but it's throughout the whole thing it just this entire universe this plot it, the reason this plot exists in the movie doesn't make any fucking sense and I, again like i said i mean, i don't know what the book is like i don't know if the book is supposed to be 
better than the film. I don't know what kind of reviews the book got. I don't know. I don't know if this stuff is explained yeah. in later books. I, I have no idea. I'm, t I'm just basing this entirely on the movie. And the movie's not getting terrible reviews. It's... It's in the 60s on Rotten Tomatoes, and I, to a point, I... Yeah, I mean, it, it got applause from the crowd who was obviously... One guy! <laughs> one, one, there was one guy in the audience who, it was, they realized no one else was clapping. No one else was... Well, I think what, he stopped when he realized you were laughing at him. I wasn't the only one. There was. I, I yeah, but your laugh carries a lot more. <laughs> I, I did one of these. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we were also like two rows behind the guy. He traveled quick. It was the only one. It was like uh, uh, uh. there was something else we saw where that happened. In was it Hangover Three? Yeah. Or was it? Well, wait. I think the audience really liked that movie, though. There was there was something that we saw that that happened in. Well, because the, the, with that one, was there like the one guy like halfway through? Because like the whole like Skittles thing. <laughs> Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and, and the fucking, like, weed scene in, like, We're the Millers. <laughs> what? <laughs> I love that guy. That's, the mountains of weed popped up in that movie. That's so much weed. There was a guy in the back corner. We were fucking watching We're the Millers, and the, when the mountains of weed shows up. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that guy would have loved this movie. Who would have that much? <laughs> it had one of the Millers in this movie. <laughs> Maybe weed would have made it better. I don't know. I mean, I can see why this is getting not terrible reviews because, I mean, it's it's an interesting enough concept, and there's a lot of action in the movie. It's not a necessarily poorly acted film. It's not even that poorly made necessarily. That girl was pretty bad though. The girl was pretty. She was. They didn't give her a lot to do. She's just she, there. Yeah. She's, she's just, just suddenly there. in the movie because they needed another plot device to happen. It would be a total sausage fest if she wasn't there. <laughs> I will say this about the movie: there's absolutely no love triangle in this. I have expected it to like turn out that those two were like brother and sister or something, since yeah. they had like no chemistry mm -hmm. with each other. No, they didn't at all. They did, but the movie doesn't give them doesn't give them an opportunity to have any chemistry with each other. They just when they talk, it's all just exposition. It's it, well, that's it. it. And yeah, unless they're having like exposition dialogue, like those two are at arm's length from each other. Like they're they're never even like if they're in the same scene, it's because one or the other of them is explaining something. Yeah, when the girl shows up. She just shows up and then is just kind of not in the movie for another 20 minutes and then comes back. I kind of forgot about her. Yeah, like, oh, at one yeah, point. The girl. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, there was a girl who looks kind of like Kristen Stewart in this movie. If she was really emaciated. <laughs> just, dude, she's been in that maze for like several minutes. <laughs> so, I mean, I can. I. The movie has enough action in it. I can, if if the stuff we've mentioned doesn't necessarily bother you, I can I can see maybe forgiving it of that and like kind of just going along for the ride. Because I'll admit it, like this kind of is the kind of movie that I usually tend to at least be interested in, like puzzle movies like this, maze movies, shit like that. Because usually just something stupid will happen in them. Like, you know, like Cube. Like, don't go in there, you get acid thrown in your face. <laughs> Why? Why would I get that to happen? <laughs> so, but this this one didn't really do it for me. But I wasn't... I, I was not mad when I was sitting there watching it. I wasn't squirming in my seat. I wasn't like, oh, God! So, I don't know. Maybe, like... As a rental, like for a couple of bucks, I can probably justify that. If, if, especially like not in a theater and being at home when you can talk during it, you know, sure, yeah. I, I can maybe justify like spending a couple of bucks. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you're the sort that if you watch like Harry Potter and Percy Jackson and fucking Hunger Games and those literary ones, like, you might as well go see this one too. If that's not your bag, this one is not going to be it for you.